Hi guys, today I want to show you something different. Of course, it will have to do something with power or high voltage or radio frequency or microwaves. Well, today I received a board from an MRI, a part from an MRI, that's a small part, a small piece from, from the whole system. MRI stands for Magnet Resonance Imaging or MRT, Magnet Resonance Tomography. Um, it looks interesting. I, I put the battery here just to show you the size relation of this board, because this board is not small. It's mostly a passive board, mostly. It seems to be some kind of RF switching board uh, between one and the other antenna. MRI, for example, um, doesn't use only magnetic fields. It uses radio frequency too, and with quite a lot of power, up to 24 kilowatts. Well, 25, sorry. This thing does not handle 25 kilowatts. This seems to be some pre-stage mm -hmm. or some, some kind of... I don't know, uh, it says antenna one, antenna two, and you will see what I mean. Anyway, it is worth, I thought it is worth to show it to show it to you because it, how RF boards look in professional systems. And this handles, even if it doesn't handle 25 kilowatts in a way, it handles a lot of power because here there are two pin diodes. I will show it to you later, this pin diode, and they are connected together in parallel with the heatsink. Let me show you a little bit more information about the... about how the... MRI works really in a nutshell and very, very, very brief. All this here, what you see, are high power porcelain microwave capacitors. I will show you the data sheets later. So let's see how this thing, how more or less an MRI works. Very brief, and very short. In a nutshell, how this thing works. You have on the one hand, that's from the UCSF, Department of Radiology and Biomedical Imaging, University of California in San Francisco. So you have a magnetic field, more or less, but in addition to that, you have an RF, uh, RF waves, radio frequency waves, it says 64 megahertz. If it, this is still applies in the modern units, I'm not sure. I think they are using now UHF and not just HF with a 64 megahertz. But anyway, the board that I have, I'm sure it is for 64 megahertz and not more. And with quite a power that they use. So how it works in more detail, etc. Everything is in the internet. I will put some links, etc. But I just wanted to show you that uh, the magnet resonant tomograph or magnet resonant imaging appliance uses high power magnetic fields and quite medium to high power RF energy in this 60, 64 megahertz uh, frequency. And since I'm on the PC, I want to show you a data sheet about the, on the, of the capacitors. This is how they look. I will do it like that. I think it's better. This is how they look. I've seen them many times in military equipment. Uh, but it's the first time that I get in my hands something that it is from a magnet res from an MRI or from medical equipment. These are special capacitors. Porcelain, extremely low ESR, ESL, can handle a lot of power, a lot of voltage. So, this is how they look. 
they are either with out leads or with micro strip leads or with wire leads. And on my board, we have board both micro strip uh, based ones and standard SMD ones. Some more information about the pin diode. Again, the theory, very, very short. So what is a pin diode? Pin diode is a special diode that when this diode is forward biased, it allows RF energy to flow like a like an switch on off. And if it is revert bias, reverse biased, it blocks the RF energy. That's it, more or less. Of course, this is the very, 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 very uh, uh, from a from a bird's eye view explanation. But this is how this thing works. Nothing else, yeah. And this is why I think these two diodes that I showed you are pin diodes. We will, we will check them together to switch between one antenna and the other antenna. And they are in parallel because they have to handle quite some power, what it seems. And here a picture of similar diodes. Now let's check them on my board. Okay, let's check the pin diodes on my board. Here, I already desoldered the one pair. Oops, sorry. You see, it was soldered on the two pads, here and here, here and here. One side is connected to an aluminum block for heat sinking purposes, probably. Not probably, I'm just sure about that. So let's turn, take one out. I already removed more or less one. This is how they look. And if you remember the picture I showed you, they look exactly the same. Unfortunately, no markings at all. They are, seem to be heavily gold-plated. Yeah, this is how they look. Let's put it inside again. Just not to lose it. Yeah, the capacitors. Let me show you. These are the porcelain capacitors. This one is with the micro strip. Do you see the two strips of metal here and here? And we have normal ones too, like this one. That's a normal SMT one. Both of them are high power, high voltage, very low loss, porcelain ceramic capacitors. Yeah, they, will, they, they cost one or two dollars. Well, that's ironic. I mean, they are not cheap. The next interesting thing is the coils. This is a coil, copper coil, that is heavily plated. And you see it's six turns. In my opinion, this is an older unit. It is from an older unit that is using a frequency in the ballpark of 60, 64 megahertz. Why? Because when I was building RF equipment, pirate transmitters, FM transmitters, for the frequency 88 to 108 megahertz in Greece, we always had the primary coil with three turns. Of course, this depends on the diameter of the coil, on the capacitor that is in parallel, etc. Anyway, but you see, this one has five turns. 
So in my opinion, we are very near to the 60 megahertz here. Just a thought. Another thing is down there. Yeah, these red parts are inductors. I don't know if there are any special inductors or something else, but I don't know. 10%. So, yeah, and nice variable capacitor, a small one. And down there we have another coil on both sides one, but take a look closer. That's not a coil. That's a transformer or a balloon. I don't know exactly what it is. And it's made with, that's not, uh, that's not a wire, that's a coax. And this kind of coax, it's called rigid coax because it's stiff. It is stiff like a single wire, single strand thick wire, and it stays however you bend it. So here they made some kind of transformer or ballon with that. This is how it looks on both sides. Another thing that was on this PCB was this capacitor, this there are two of were two of them of these variable capacitors. One on the one on this side. Oops. Sorry, one on this side and one on the other side, like that. And if you see here, it's missing a copper foil. And here, the copper foil misses too, because it's missing too, because it was connected with a copper foil and I removed it, that's all. The only active parts on this PCB are these two double pairs of diodes. There's normal diodes. And these two, in my opinion, parallel in parallel pin diodes. Everything else we have just an Standard transistor, I think it's a BDX53. I don't know. I'm I, I, probably it's a Darlington, but I'm not sure. And I'm not even sure for what it is here. Yeah? It is for some kind of voltage regulator, probably. My opinion from this DB9 connector, the, the antennas because we have here two antennas connected, as we see in this on this can, antenna one, antenna two, and it forward biases either this pair or this pair, and it, this connects to one antenna and to the other antenna. This is what I think. But anyway, let's look what is in the cans. By the way, guys, in case you like what I see, uh, you like what you see, <laughs> I like what I see, yeah. If you like what you see, if you like my videos, if you like my content, please uh, press the like button, ta -da! subscribe to my channel and press the bell button, ring the bell, so you can get, in con so get notification when I put new stuff online. All these three things help me to grow the channel and helps me to show you more of this, I hope, interesting stuff and stuff that you don't see every day. At least I don't see it every day here. Yeah? This is why I'm showing it to you because it is for me an novum. It is new, this 
kind of parts, even that I have seen these parts many times on military equipment, but in, the, in this combination, I see it for the first time. Sorry for the ringing, my food came that I ordered. Anyway, let's continue. Yummy, yummy. Here, I want to show you the bottom of the can. And you're starting to see more things. First of all, this is just Is it or is it not? We have on both sides a coupling. We have a coil that is coupled. We have one on the on the top and one on the bottom. Interesting. Yeah, it says Siemens. Okay. And it says PCB for power splitter, blah, blah, something. And it has a lot, a lot, a lot, a lot of beautiful smaller ceramic porcelain RF high power capacitors. They are connected in series, in parallel. Yeah. And as it says, probably <laughs> it is a power splitter. What I don't understand is it says in one and down there in two. But here it says RX TX. So I don't know what's exactly what it means. Anyway, in my opinion, this board is nothing else than a tuned switch that switches between one antenna and the other. And perhaps it is used to measure some kind of power, input power, or the output power of the 64 megahertz transmitter with this thing. That's just my opinion. So, again, this is how it looks. This is the size of this coil. Yeah, it's almost like the like the 9 volt battery itself. It is quite difficult to show you the complete PCB because it is so big. I have to put it down and do it like that. So, I hope you like this short, relatively short video. Um, this is an interesting board for me and I bought it only because I liked it how it looked how the components, the kind of components that I used and what they used, how they did it. So, wish you a happy Easter. Thank you for watching. Please subscribe to my channel and cheers. Bye.